in our main event. That is Roberto Garcia. He is up against Antoine Smith, who's had a lot of success on Friday Night Fights through the years. But the last time out, he lost. And it was a big opportunity fight against Kermit Cintron. Now he's looking to get some career momentum coming to the backyard of Roberto Garcia. There is Smith, 25 years old, South Florida base, 21-3 and 1. As he awaits the arrival of Roberto Garcia, who will get a nice reception here in front of his home fans, a Texas-based veteran who's recently trained in New Jersey but lives about 20 minutes away from here in far Texas. Roberto Garcia, now 31 years old. 30 wins against three losses and 21 knockouts. He was born in Mexico, just across the Rio Grande from McAllen, Texas, and then moved 50 miles inland. When he was 10 years old, both his parents died. Taken in by an uncle here in Texas. Mary just became a father. A baby girl born in February. Her name is Gia. And he is inspired and ready to take action and take a step forward in his career. Biggest fight came in May 2010. Lost a 10-round decision to Antonio Margarito. Was down in the first round. So Smith and Garcia just about ready for action as Teddy brings us the fight plan brought to you by Corona Extra. What do we know today that we didn't know a couple days ago? Well, first of all, we know where Peyton Manning's going to be playing. Second of all, we know where Tim Tebow will be throwing his passes. Speaking about throwing, well, both our fighters in the main event, they have different ways of tossing their punches. Smith, a little bit like Manning. Short, concise punches. Straight, nice spiral. Well, Garcia, a little bit like Tebow. Wide punches, looping shots, wobbly ducks. Let's find out who's getting into the end zone. I'm going to be Smith or Peyton Manning. And, well, first of all, got a wide punch in front of you. He's a little slow. Step to the side. Go outside the pocket a little bit. Or step up in the pocket. Right inside those shots. Bang, 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 bang. Punch right back. Rotate your shoulder a little bit. Punch in between. If you're Smith and you do that, well, it's going to be Peyton's place. Or, well, I should say Smith's down. How's that sound? Good. A touchdown. All right, now it's Tebow time for Garcia's moment. How does he make those wobbly wide punches count? Well, by throwing them to the right routes. Where they go is what counts. First of all, he's got to get inside. Smith helps him a little bit. He does cover up. So you see linebackers there? Don't go into the linebackers. Go around the linebackers, around the elbow. Up here, defensive linemen, go around them, around the ears. If you do that and you miss the Garcia, well, it might not be pretty. It might be a little ugly. But it's still a touchdown, and it's still going to be Tebow time, or his version of it. Saul Tebow is. Here's the guy that the analogy is for. Says when he lost to Antonio Margarito, he was not at his best. That Margarito beat an angry fighter that night, not a skilled fighter. Now he feels he's a skilled and focused fighter here against Antoine Smith. Scheduled for 10, Lee Rogers is our rep. Roberto. Hey guys, you got your instructions from the rest of the room. Best of luck to both of you. Let's touch them up. So, you know. In the fight plan, I talked about how Garcia has no choice, kind of like Tebow. You know, he has to go in one place. Go slug it out, right on the inside. Now, if you were the promoter, and of course, Garcia is the local guy, and you wanted to make sure you helped him do that, 
find a way to slug it out. What would you do? I'd fight in a phone booth. I would fight in a phone booth. Well, we have almost a phone booth here. This ring, we measured it. It's 15 feet and 8 inches on the inside. And the smallest that a ring is allowed by rules here is 16 feet. So this ring is smaller than was normally allowed. And it's no accident. Advantage Garcia. Advantage the promoter's fighter. Exactly. And no, we're not suddenly switching to a tennis match where you're seeing, you know, Monica Sellers, you know, <laughs> with the batting some forehands <laughs> across the net. No, you're not seeing that. You are seeing boxing, and that noise, that barking, <laughs> is Smith. That's what he does. Smith has a habit of this. We've talked to him about it through the years. Yesterday, he said, listen, when I'm grunting, I feel like I'm comfortable. I'm in the zone. He said that he used to hide it. He was a teenager fighting, and he, he felt comfortable doing it. But when people were around, he wouldn't grunt. But he really wanted to do it. And then he watched Glenn Johnson in the gym, and he said Glenn Johnson, who was on top of the world at the time, light heavyweight champion, he said that Glenn Johnson would grunt. He said if Glenn Johnson would do it, I can do it. Glenn Johnson never did it like this. Though. No, never did it like this. And I don't think that he really... I don't know that it serves him, because if there was a knock on him, it's that he doesn't throw combinations, Smith. He's got quick hands, and he switches out for right there, which he'll do once in a while. But he doesn't, what's the sense of having quick hands if you don't put them together? He throws, for the most part, one punch at a time. And I think when you're shouting out a cadence, ha, 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 you're kind of setting yourself up, Joe, mentally, to throw one punch at a time. Right. Because what are you going to do? Go ha, 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 ha. Right. A five-punch combination would have you out of breath. It would. Right. It would have my ears ringing. Exactly. Thank God for single punches from Smith. But, again, I think that it's part of his... It hurts him a little bit. I don't want to say his demise, because he's done pretty well in his career so far. 21-3 and three with one draw. But, again, I'd want him throwing combinations. And when you're doing that barking... You kind of get yourself set for the one shot at a time and the effort of one shot at a time. Also, doesn't it reveal to your opponent a rhythmic pattern and an opportunity for countering? I mean, it's a little predictable. You know, one punch is coming, you're right. And when you know after a while, you realize, hey, one punch is coming, you know when to counter. You know what to expect. You know what to be defensive about, what not to be defensive about. I see a slow starter, and you see that here. Coming to the end of one, Smith and Garcia. Nice crowd coming out for Friday night fights here at the Far Event Center. You see that group in the back as well as in the far back underneath our signage. That is standing room only, going about 10 deep as they have come out to see James De La Rosa, who came up with a victory in our first fight, a local product, and now Roberto Garcia here in our main event. Grew up just about 20 minutes away, taking on the veteran Antoine Smith, round number two. You wonder whether or not if Smith was to lose his fight, if he would put in a protest. And, you know, legitimately so. I mean, not a real big deal, but legitimately, he could say that Aiba, who is in charge of the rules for size of rings here, has it in their rules that 16 feet is the minimum, the smallest you can be. Once again, the Texas Commission has measured this out at 16 feet, but unofficially our folks measured it at 15.8, and to Teddy's point, that's an advantage for Roberto Garcia. Yeah, and an advantage that he'll start showing now as the rounds go on because Takes him a little time to get his engine going. Speaking of engines going, Teddy, coverage is going to start at 5 Eastern Saturday on ESPN for the NASCAR Nationwide Series at California. It also streams live on WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. Again, you can see that Smith has some choices. He gets caught there looking shot. Sweeping right hand that time. Yeah, you don't pull back some sweeping punches because they will sweep you. You pull back into them. You should bend underneath them or dip inside them. But again, 
Smith does have more options. He has legs. He can be mobile if he wants a little bit. You know, and Garcia can't. Garcia can be one thing, a tough ombre. A guy that does that, walks forward. Sometimes he eat punches, but he'll deliver punches too. You know, Garcia's been bigger lately, Joe. Last seven fights, he's been between junior middleweight and middleweight, while Smith, well, he's been as low as welterweight. He's been at welterweight in his last fight, a junior welterweight. But amazingly, a little surprising to me, Smith jumped way up, and he put on 13 pounds going into tonight from his last fight only four months ago, coming in the heaviest of his career, Smith. A little surprised at that. And I wonder if that's going to slow him down. He thinks he's going to make him bigger to deal with Garcia. I get it. But I wonder if it's going to slow him down, make him stand in front of Garcia a little bit more. And to me, that's what Garcia wants. He can't deal with movement, Garcia. He needs you to stand in front of him. Teddy, I, I want to bring I want to bring this up because I noticed the same exact thing last night, Teddy, what you noticed, that weight difference. And we're ending this round a little early here, so we'll bring that up in the third round. It was a... Let's go, let's go. Well, they sold out all the seating here at the Far Event Center for Friday Night Fight, so that's a $20 ticket to stand against the back wall. Standing room only to see Roberto Garcia, the local junior middleweight, take on Antoine Smith. Teddy, at the end of the round, we were discussing it, and you brought up the point, which I, I was making the same point when I looked at that, and then I realized there was a clerical error in the reporting of his last bout. He actually came in to Antoine Smith at 151, not 141. So in terms of that weight difference you were referring to, uh, such is the record keeping of boxing sometimes. Yes, yeah, such is the record keeping of many people sometimes. Yes. In this case, boxing. So he did not put on 13 pounds since his last fight, but still coming in the heaviest That's weight right. at 154 of his career. And I'm still thinking, why would you want to come in heavy with a guy that, for me, you wouldn't want to stand in front of? No doubt about it. And that guy is Roberto Garcia. We're straight in front of him right now and what we've uh, documented is this very, very tight quarters of a ring. And if I'm going to see him doing what he did a moment ago, throwing punches to the body and taking the ability of Smith to be mobile, take it away from him. Take some air out of them tires. And Garcia is a rough and tumble guy, Joe. Walking guy, no thrills. You know, what you see is what you get. And being rough and tumble, he's been penalized for headbutting low blows in his career. What happened in his fight against Antonio Margarito had the point deductions for headbutting and low blows. That was May 2010. You know, you talk about telegraphing a punch. I mean, Schmidt's taking it to another level. I mean, sometimes he's actually starting to yell before he throws a punch. I mean, you know it's coming, and you can time him. And the guy being timed here, to be honest with you, should be Garcia because Garcia throws wider punches. Not as clean, not as smooth, not as short as Smith. And when he throws a wide punch, there's opportunities for Smith to punch inside. He's literally announcing the arrival of the punch. There he is. And you don't want to announce the arrival of punches if you're a fighter. If you're a commentator, yes. We can do that. Fighting, no. There's a right hand to the body as he tried to sneak it in underneath that left elbow. Smith waits on him, trying to tee up a counter right hand. There's a straight right hand from Garcia. Smith fires back. You know, Smith falls back after he punches. I noticed that. They throw a punch, and then he'll fall out in front of you, wave a little bit there, like he did right there. And if you follow him, you're going to get paid there. And Garcia followed him there with the right hand. Smith trying to rally late after Garcia landed his best punch so far tonight. You know, if you're an orthodox fighter and the guy's throwing right hands at you, you don't want to pose on the right side. And Smith posed on the right side. Watch again. On his right side, he poses a little bit. You want to finish your head movement on the left side. Why? Well, 
so you outside the right hand. And he stayed right in the path of that right hand of Roberto Garcia. Glad you're with us here for our main event on Friday Night Fights. It's been a fun night here in Far, Texas. Round number four, scheduled for 10. Joe Tessator, Teddy Atlas with you. CompuBox sees it this way through three rounds. 68 landed for Smith, 66 landed for the local product, Roberto Garcia. Garcia has been involved, you know, he's a forward style guy, gets in there with his head a little bit, he's been involved in head clashes before. Smith, I notice, you know, the kind of punches he throws, the snap he gets, the twist he gets on his glove, the talk he gets on his punches, he seems to cut guys sometimes with his punches. That time he tried to pick him up with that left hand. So there's two opportunities to do work on Smith. One is when he just covers up like he's doing right now. He lets you do work on him. Work him over like a heavy bag a little bit. And the other is when he goes out. He goes straight out. And I said it in, in the last round, Joe. You know, sometimes after Smith throws, he just kind of float out in front, pose a little bit in front of you. That's not the... Not a good thing to do with anybody, but especially with an aggressive guy, he's usually going to follow you as you go back. There's a good shot. Again, the straighter shot. Yeah, the straighter. The straighter, faster hands belong to Smith. The heavier hands, Garcia. A little pop off the hip as well that time. As Garcia lands the right hand to the body, and then a little up jab from Smith. He was able to roll against that right hand from Garcia. Didn't land at all. Digging now with a left hand to the body before tying up. You know, Smith wanted a good fight plan. He should have talked to a real estate agent before he got in the ring here. Because he would have told him what it's all about. It's about location. Location, location. And Smith not paying attention to the proper location. You can't get hit by Garcia unless you stand in front of him. It's too slow to hit you if you don't stand in front of him. And Smith, for the most part, standing in front. Better round, though, for Smith this round. He's had his moments here in this fourth round, in this tiny ring where standing in front of him seems like no matter where you go, you are. Well, again, Garcia's people wanted to give him a little edge. They made the ring as small as possible. Good uppercut there by Smith. Best effort he's had so far tonight. Is it really what you think you're seeing? You're seeing a left hook, big left hook. Is it a big left hook, or does Smith roll with it a little bit? Yeah, the left hook landed, Joe, but Smith turned his head and took a lot off that punch. You know, sometimes what you think you're seeing in that ring isn't necessarily what you are seeing. Little David, little David Copperfield going on there. You know, a little illusion. The good fighters, they see the punches, they take something off them. They roll with them a little bit. Garcia from about 20 minutes away here in far Texas, but he went up to New Jersey to train for this fight against Antoine Smith. Sparred with Kendall Holt in recent weeks. Of course, a TKO victor last week on Friday Night Fights against Tim Coleman. What did you think of Kendall Holt last week, Teddy? I, I was uh, elsewhere on vacation. I know, so welcome I didn't get back. Your, didn't get your final assessment on Kendall Holt. I know you and your family had a great time in Italy. That was very nice. I thought that Holt was Holt. He's a good puncher. And if you stand in front of him, he can hit you, and if he hits you, he can affect you. And he had a guy in Coleman that had been knocked out the fight before to the body. And I thought, Holt did his homework. He went to the body, and he got rid of him. And it was not a good effort, quite honestly, by Coleman. It's a better effort here from Antoine Smith in these middle rounds, and much of the same from Roberto Garcia. Closing space on the inside. Tried to get around with that right hand that time before being separated by referee Lee Rogers. 
Both of these fighters have been in there with former world champions. Garcia, for his part, has fought more good fighters. And all in all, he's fared better with them. I think that's fair to say in his body of work so far through his career. Smith really made his mark by getting himself on Friday night fights and pulling off a few upsets and streaking with four straight televised wins and then had the loss to Kermit Simpson. And there's a right hand by Garcia as he just followed Smith back against those ropes. And there's a great illustration of what this fight's about, Joe. On the outside, Garcia was having all kinds of problems getting close because the quicker hand straight up punching Smith was keeping him outside. But once Garcia got inside, he knew what to do, land the right hand. So I guess what I'm saying is if you see the fight fought on the outside, Smith has a chance to win. On the inside, less of a chance. See, I don't understand why Smith doesn't move those hands before Garcia gets close. That's where he's got the advantage. Not here, in close. <laughs> this is all you need to know, all you need to see. On the outside, it's all Smith. Moving his hands, the right distance, quicker hands, straighter hands, little distance. Then he goes against the ropes. Distance taken away, bang. Garcia's property. Garcia's place. Roberto, six rounds. Stay over there. Stay over there. Here we go. Number six. You watch that little clip there, Joe, and again, as I said, that's all you need to know. And if they had video monitors in the corners, you'd show that to Smith and say, hey, why don't you do more on the outside? Because look, this is working for you. It's not working when you let him get close. Let's see how it's working on Teddy's scorecard. Halfway point, Garcia 48-47. And I tell you, that last round, any of you fans out there want to argue with me, and I know you love to argue with me, go ahead. You could argue that Smith carried the round, and you could have gave it to Smith. I gave it to Garcia, and I'm not afraid to say, really based on the harder punch of the round, the bigger punch, the more impactful punch, that right hand. And on Friday Night Fights, we invite you to argue with us. Get there on Facebook, the Friday Night Fight page, or tweet Friday Night Fights to Bernardo or Nigel. Always a good forum with our fight fans each and every week. Garcia's a throwback fighter in the way that his attitude you know, no skills, just wants to fight. He's got the mentality of fight, and he throws that punch that the old-time fighters, even the great Sugar Ray Robinson used to throw. Gene Fulmer, who was a great middleweight, used to throw that right hand, that kind of hook right hand around the elbow to the body. You know what I mean, Joe? The old-time fighters do that more than the modern-day fighters do now. And Garcia throws that. He goes defensive on him. He'll throw that hook right hand, that right hand right almost gets near the kidney not quite to the kidney legal punch a damaging punch two things helping garcia here joe one is smith's not keeping him outside he's not using the quicker longer arms quicker hands that wingspan on the outside where he has a huge advantage and the other thing again small ring that helps Garcia a little bit. It listed as a 16-foot ring. We measured it out at 15.8. It's as small as it gets. Blue Horizon small. You know, there's that right hand. That's that old-fashioned right, right hand. Then he hand goes hand. upstairs. He goes downstairs. There's the downstairs one. And again, it's in the repertoire, Garcia, that old-fashioned repertoire. But also, Smith gives it to you, Joe. Watch, he'll turn a little bit, and he'll give you that side. There he goes. He raises that elbow, and he turns. We're going to take a very short break here at the end of six, and then we will have a question from our social media friends. Stay with us. Bernardo Soon in the Friday Night Fight studio. And uh, Joe, our Facebook page is lighting up, and Luan Howland is asking, 
Do you feel that Smith thinks that by grunting every time, it lets the judges assuming that he's landing every punch he throws? Teddy, what do you think? I, I actually think, Bernardo and Teddy, I'd love your thought on this, that it has an opposite effect because by grunting every time, you're actually telling the judges, you hear one grunt, there's only one punch. I'm not working as much. I agree with, I agree with you. Bernardo, I want to know who asked that question. Does he need what sometimes I think the judges need? Eyeglasses? I mean, just because there's a noise coming, don't you have eyes? <laughs> You're telling me that that fan who sent that in actually believes that the judges hear the noise and they take for granted the land? Let's get rid of those judges. Let's get rid of them. More interestingly, we'd love to hear on Facebook and Twitter, when you're sitting back at home, as many ringside may say, does it annoy you like it does so well, many yeah, times exactly. in tennis? Well, right now, what's annoying Smith is the right hands that are landed by Garcia. That's annoying him. And, you know, getting back to the fan who said, hey, do you think the judges take for granted they hear a noise that that means it landed? Hey, you hear the crack of the bat in the baseball game, don't you? Yeah. You don't take for granted it's going over the wall. <laughs> you wait to see it go over the wall. <laughs> or you wait to see it land in the outfield for a base hit. We're Just around the base corner, hits. Teddy, uh, baseball season getting ready to start up. And I think that that's a little bit of a good metaphor, a little good analogy right here. I mean, you know, Smith has made himself into a singles hitter, you know, by grunting all night. And when you got a guy in front of you who can hit doubles every once in a while, and triples every once in a while, like that, there's a nice triple. No, well, guess what? That guy's going to get his around the bases a little bit better, a little bit more. And he's doing it right now, again, downstairs with the right hand, upstairs with the right hand. And I was talking about the ring size. If you don't think it's an advantage, if you don't think it's part of the history of boxing, think again. i got a great story for you. March 1961, fourth fight between Foma and Sugar Ray Robinson. Foma was the champ. The ring was about 18 feet. The night before the fight, Robinson demanded that a larger ring was brought in. Foma's promoter. He lies to Robinson, says he brought a new ring in. In the meantime, he took a paper tape measure, cuts two feet out of it, tapes it back together. Robinson inspects the ring the next day of the fight and says it looks the same size. Former promoter pulls out the doctor tape measure and shows Ray the ring is now 20 feet. Robinson lost the unanimous decision. Boxing, the law. And we want to thank Lou Ann, our Facebook friend, for offering up that question that spurred the conversation we had about Antoine Smith's grunting. Good job, Luann. Feel free to ask more. You know, my job is to fight. The talk trash is the promoter, trainers, or whoever else want to do it. I do all my talking myself. Nobody has to pump me up. My promoter don't speak for me. I speak for myself. And some would say he never stops talking. That is Hammer and Hank Lundy. He'll be in the main event next week against Danny Williams. That is next week from Foxwoods. 9 o'clock start time. Teddy, I will tell you, this has been a good main event here and a good card overall. Great energy here at the FAR Event Center. Standing room only. But that's the main event that I've been looking forward to the most so far on this season of Friday Night Fights. Next week, Hank Lundy. Danny Williams. I agree with you. That should be a very interesting fight and a very entertaining fight. Round number eight here between Garcia and Smith. Garcia has had the advantages tonight with having the fight on the inside. Smith has had his moments. You know, Joe, you mentioned one of the great old fight clubs, arenas in the country. A couple rounds ago, the Blue, Blue Horizon, Horizon in yeah. Philadelphia. And our friend, the Hall of Fame promoter, Russell Peltz, put on so many great fights there. And, you know, you wouldn't be surprised. So many great fights. There's got to be a reason for it. Well, one of the reasons for all the classic fights in the Blue Horizon, the ring was 16 feet, which was the smallest ring size allowed by the state commission. And, of course, I don't know what our friend Russell Peltz would say about this, but he was always looking to make a great fight and what room was floating around was that that ring was actually smaller than that maybe 15 and a half feet 
you, know, you and I broadcast many fights at the Blue Horizon through the years. And that was as tight as it got, uh, reminiscent of some of the old hits in boxing and some of these inner city fight clubs going back to the 40s and 50s. And tonight here in Far Texas, we measured it out at 15-8. Some loose tape now on the glove, the right glove of Garcia. You wonder if that's going to interrupt the action. Again, this Referee Lee Rogers not taking advantage of some of the pauses in the action, although we have had some good action here in the last 30 seconds. And you know, Joe, all the heart in the world is played by both fighters, but just not good precision so far as hurting Smith, I think, standing in front of Garcia just too much. Not using those legs. You know, Garcia doesn't have the choice of legs. Smith does. There's a right hand that comes in, that loose tape on that right wrist. Really surprised. I mean, it's not as if it's just a little piece. It's a full string now that's coming across and whipping, potentially across the face of Antoine Smith when Garcia throws that right hand. And the right hand is the punch that Garcia actually concentrates on to really be effective, to land with power to the body and to the head. As and there is again. a right hand, Teddy. So that's Smith tries body. to fire back. Punch of the Night is brought to you by Just For Men. We go back to our co-feature in Tyro Brunson. Yeah, in the second round, you see the left hook land. The right hand doesn't get covered by De La Rosa. Watch the right hand. He doesn't cover. The left hook does cover. It covers the left side or the right side of the face of Brunson. Or I should say of De La Rosa. And that's our punch of the night. But what it also shows you is that you can get dropped get off the floor and come back and win and that's exactly what de la rosa did it was a good effort by de la rosa tonight it's from this area down near the border mccallan far area of texas as is the case with roberto garcia no robert robert garcia if Bethany keeps saying no robert robert says yes <laughs> with that right hand Close to the kidney. And doing that right there, leaning down on Smith when he ducks his head. He's a rough and tumble guy. You know, he's going to take what he can take. After all, in his mind, this is called fighting, not the opera. And as long as we win in the rules, oh, he's going he's gonna to push it to the limit. And he keeps throwing that right hand around the elbow and yeah. around the side of Smith. Smith's going to be drinking a lot of soup for the next few days. Coming around that backside, it's not where we want to get hit. Now Smith comes forward and then Garcia lands a right hand. And then after the fight, read about Joe Frazier and Ali, of course, those monstrous fights. And even Foreman and Zaire with Ali, where he played rope and dope and took a lot of those body shots. And you heard the reports afterwards that Ali was urinating blood for several days. You know, all those body shots and getting hit in the kidneys. It's a tough sport. That's why I get so upset when the judges don't get it right. Because then you force these fighters to go through all that again when they're already at a point where they win an impactful fight, getting close to making the money, maybe getting out. And then you rob them. And they got to come all the way through that again and take thousands more punches to get back to that point. That's right. why I take it serious. That's why sometimes I get kind of angry. Looks like there's a cut near the left eye of Garcia. Just a little streak of blood that showed up moments ago. You know, now an exchange on the inside as both men trying to go to the head. Garcia may have gotten the best of it with a left hand. Well, that's Garcia's territory. And that right hand again scores in between the shot. He, he doesn't just chuck the right hand. Give Garcia credit. He knows when to throw it. That's why he's so darn effective with it. He knows when to throw it. I guess after you've had 34 fights, you're calm enough to know when. have one round to go as we will listen in to each corner. 
You see, that round one. Bam. See that round. I'm going to put everything now in this round one. Okay? Bam. Bam, champion. Bam. 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 Bam, champion. Bam. You see the last round. Bam. They put everything now. They move the head. Move the head. Hit it. Go belly the back. Hit it again. Turn it now. Okay? Jab more. Jab down. And right up. Anton. Jab down. Right. And left hook. Okay? Bam. They close. They throw now. Bam. You put everything in the round, Anton. Bam. Bam. They close. They throw. Champion. Bam. 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 They close. They throw. Watch the water. Watch the water. Come on, you got to Come on, you got to win this round big. You got to win this round big. Right there, 10. Touch him. All right, we'll go. I'm on to. Go. You know, Joe Smith, six years younger, he's going to need some of that youth in his last round. He's going to pull this fight out. You know, it's a funny thing. We noted early, it was pretty easy to early note that Smith has the faster hands. Yeah, that's going out. But I noticed coming back, they're not fast. He doesn't always cover with them fast. And he leaves a little bit of an opening, an opening that Garcia has been getting through with his punches. Just watch Smith. Goes out quick, they don't get back quick. You saw the CompuBox numbers compiled through nine rounds. See that? Ago. See that left hand there, Joe? Yes. Sorry to interrupt you, but he throws the left hand, the right hand. Smith, look how slow that left hand comes back. That's the problem. Not going out, but coming back. And guess what? Smith. Now, see, he solved that problem. He saw that early, that he covers slow, and that's why he's timing his punches as the punches come back. Punches thrown by Garcia has been an impressive number tonight. You know, coming into this fight, Garcia, 31 years old, 35th fight. A lot of people would say, well, are you sure that he's not, you know, worn out? You know, maybe a little done at 31 after those fights. But I didn't think he was done. And the reason for it is... He revenged the loss from the first fight, the first loss of his career, from 2003. He revenged that in his last fight. And that tells me that he's still got plenty left to beat a guy at this point that he lost to back in 2003. That's all I needed to know. That was important to him. And you hear this crowd here at the Far Event Center trying to rally support in this final minute and get a hard-earned, well-deserved win for Garcia. And a geography lesson for Smith. Don't stand inside with a guy who stands inside better than you. I'll tell you another problem with that grunting, Joe. You're setting yourself up, really mentally, and I think technically and physically, but mentally, and this game is mental, you're setting yourself up to really confess it only one punch at a time. Right. Like that right hand a minute ago. It was a good right hand. It was a good one. right hand. So they go the distance, and it will be in the hands of the judges. But a good, consistent effort on the inside by Roberto Garcia. We will hear from the judges when we return to Texas. Great crowd here at the Far Event Center. They came out to see Roberto Garcia. The local product taking on the veteran Antoine Smith as we look back at the fight recap, Teddy. What's all that noise? Oh, that's Smith. Throwing one punch at a time and pulling back and getting caught with the big shots for most part all night long. Texas rocks. Let's see if Texas's native son rocked here. Teddy scorecard. Looks this way, 98-92. As for what the local judges say, for that information, we send it up to the ring to Jeff Houston. 
Ladies and gentlemen, our main event has gone the distance. And once again, we go to our judges for the decision. Judge Maldonado scores the bout 98 to 92. Judge Chapa scores the bout 97 to 93. Judge Rogers also sees the bout 97 to 93 for the winner by unanimous decision from West Lockwood.